Good Sunday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, USA. For those of you tuning in from outside the country tonight, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. It is a quiet night. We've got a few clouds around. We've had a beautiful sunset for this evening, the crescent moon fading away in the western skies, and things, again, are going to be quiet, if not warm, for the rest of the evening's night. Into the next couple of days, we continue to see some very hot conditions out there. Not great news for outdoor activity. But if you didn't tune in last night, we've got some better news on store for, again, the end of the week and into this weekend. We'll be looking at some nicer conditions out there as well as a chance of rainfall. Saw some record-setting temperatures across parts of the area today around Tupelo, a high of 97, which blew away the old record high of 95. This month of September is going to go down as one of the hottest and driest in the Mid-South. We'll take a look at the weather almanac coming up here in just a little bit. If you can't stick around for the whole forecast, it's scrolling by here in the blue bar at the bottom of your screen. Or don't forget, again, you can pick up all the forecast information available at WREG.com slash weather. Drop your location and your weather reports into the comments section. Let's see what's going on out there, and we'll talk more about what's happening in your forecast for the Mid-South here in just a little bit. We again see a pretty mild evening coming up with temperatures going back into and around the lower to mid-70s, but that's about as good as it gets into and around the area for tonight. We'll be looking at temperatures again about the lower to mid-70s tomorrow morning, about daybreak or so, and winds out of the south at about maybe five miles per hour or less, but not much more than that out there. 94 degrees, this is for Memphis for today. That's 14 degrees above normal, within four degrees of a record high that hasn't been tied or broken since 1953. Low temperature this morning, also about 15, 14 degrees or so, somewhere about that area, and a record low, 36. That would feel a little nicer, but hasn't seen anything like that for a while. The hottest temperatures out there, again, still to come for the next couple of days, might even be hotter than what it was in parts of August, depending on how it goes. And this is the big thing right here. 12 hundredths of an inch of precipitation. That's it for the entire month of September. That's all that we've gotten around here. Now, September can typically be a very dry month, but again, this is something that we haven't seen in quite some time, kind of a mini drought taking place almost, and that is causing problems with wildfires. And we'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit, so stay tuned for more on the burn ban front out there. Jeffrey Griffiths from Walls, Mississippi, checking in with 81 degrees. Thank you very much for that one. Marilyn Campbell, we need a little rainfall. I would go for a lot, but it will take a little at this point in time for right now. And looking again at some pretty uh, hot conditions as well, not helping things out too much. Michelle McWeather, good Great name for tuning in for tonight. Love that last name for today, but I'm very partial to anything weather out there. Detroit, thanks for joining us uh, into around the area. Harris Wallace just wants some cold temperatures. I can understand that. And welcome to everybody else who's tuning in across the area for tonight. Big River Crossing and Mighty Lights doing their thing. Lit up earlier in gold for the St. Jude uh, runners for this last weekend, and again, showing the top-of-the-hour displays going on for right now. Good visibility out there, a few clouds going on. West Memphis out on the horizon, looking from downtown Memphis off to the west and around the Mississippi River and Mud Island down here around the I-40 Hernando de Soto Bridge. So definitely some good conditions out there for a stroll. Again, the dry conditions out there should persist for the next couple of days. Unfortunately, but at least we've got some very nice conditions into the rest of the evening. Got very dry air in place across much of the area. And notice again this clockwise swirl. That's an area of high pressure. And that does exactly what its name implies. Overabundance of air pressure molecules, air molecules pushing down to the surface keeping things very stable. So that's what we've got in store for here. Around the periphery of that, we've got some showers and some thunderstorms taking place. But here in the Mid-South area, outside of those clouds that you see out there, there's really little of anything taking place anywhere close to the Mid-South. The closest rainfall to us actually was over by Chattanooga, and that's about as close as it gets for anything involving uh, rainfall into and around the area for right now. So that's, again, going to be seeing the best possibility of rain for tonight anywhere close to the Mid-South area, so that's going to be about it. Scott Bullard from Macon, 
Mason, Macon, Tennessee. Two-point typeface and bifocals are not a great combination. Any rain in the forecast? Yes, we'll take a look at that coming up uh, in just a little bit. Welcome to everybody checking in from around the area for right now. Marion, Arkansas, 81. Christy Simmons, thank you very much uh, for that one. A little farther from outside the Mid-South, Patricia Potter Grindstaff. Hope I'm saying that right. Uh, from Beverly Hills, Florida. Uh, thanks a lot to everybody for joining us out there. Still very toasty, even at just past 8 o'clock in the evening. We've got numbers back in the mid to upper 80s around the central part of the metro area, and that means heat indexes are still up there in the lower to mid 90s. So some pretty toasty conditions out there already, and numbers not much more than the mid to upper 70s or so, and that trend's going to continue for a while, again, showing low temperatures tomorrow night, still in the mid 70s at best, so we're not looking at too much out there to help us out on that. All right, running the numbers into later on tonight, the computer, again, with a dry and stable atmosphere, gets a little bit over eager, popping up a couple of showers here and there. No chance of that, in my opinion, so we're just not looking at too much of anything to help us out there. News Channel 3 Daybreak starts tomorrow at 4.30 a.m. Tune in for Todd DeMar's forecast and numbers for low temperatures only back in the upper 60s to right about the lower 70s, so that's about as good as it gets there. Rush hour temperatures about the same. Once the sun comes up, we'll be looking for some very warm conditions in there as we get into around the rest of the day. So by the time you get the kids to school, mid-morning temperatures in the lower to mid-80s already, lunchtime temperatures back in the 90s, the moving lines on screen, that's the winds coming in from out of the south, and that's going to help to escort in even more Gulf of Mexico, very humid, tropical-like air. So no relief in sight as we go into tomorrow, and it looks like high temperatures. This is going to be the main thing for the next couple of days for extracurricular activities outside after school and for anybody who has to be outdoors tomorrow, especially in the afternoon and evening. This is just going to be the air temperatures, lower to mid-90s. Combine that with the humidity out there, and we'll be seeing heat index temperatures easily in the triple digits. Not enough for a heat advisory right now, but we're pretty close to that limit, so keep it tuned to News Channel 3. If the National Weather Service issues a heat advisory, we will let you know about that as soon as we get that information from there. Betty Levingston, when are we going to get some rain? We'll answer that question coming up here in just a little bit. Likewise, Jeff Joyner will talk about the rain chances here in just a little while, so stick around for that. And into tomorrow evening, again, it'll be pleasant as the sun goes down. Temperatures will be back in the lower 80s about this time tomorrow night, but not much changing again until about the end of the week. So what does that look like? Well, let's take a look at that and run the numbers here. Tomorrow, temperatures back into the mid to upper 90s. And once again, goose eggs where it comes to anything involving rainfall across the Mid-South. We continue to see some pretty uh, hot conditions out there for right now. Into Tuesday as well, temperatures even hotter, approaching record high territory, but hopefully not broaching that into the next couple of days. Same forecast basically for Wednesday. The early part of the week is where we see the heat stick around, but then things start to change by just a little bit as we go into the next couple of days. Now, again, good news at this time. No severe weather taking place as we go into Thursday. It's an election day around the area. So once again, don't let the heat, don't let any weather excuse, again, be an excuse for not voting. Get out and cast your vote like a good citizen should do. Participating in your community, that's one of the best things you can do. And casting that vote is very important. So get out and cast your ballot on Thursday, lower 90s there. Then we start to see some changes taking place. If everything works, by the time we get into the week's end, Friday night football looks a little bit more comfortable than it has been over the last few weeks of the season. Going into Saturday and Sunday, the first or the second weekend of autumn, some chances of showers and thunderstorms by the time we hit Thursday and Friday evening, but not great chances. And then better chances as we go towards Sunday. Later on, as we get into around the first full week of October, that's where we see the temperatures, again, correspondingly a little nicer. More chances of rainfall, so that could be a problem for outdoor activities. But right now, given the fact that we've had a smattering of raindrops in the rain gauge, I really don't see any problem of, again, anybody getting some more rain chances out there for the time being. Also, some low temperatures, if this holds, 
We could see some numbers in the high 50s to around the lower 60s at nighttime instead of these 70s and near 80 degrees as we've seen for a while. So much improved on that. Unfortunately, it is going to, again, be a few more days out and forecast, again, this far out can change a lot. So that's important why you need to stay tuned to the weather experts and we'll keep you updated on this. Either way, trends are pointing towards some relief heading our way. It's going to be kind of getting a little better by the weekend and a lot better as we go into about the middle part of October. So, so far, looking a lot better out there. And hopefully, again, it will stay that way. We'll keep you updated on that. Now, the problem we've got is the dry conditions across the Mid-South. And this is important. It may not affect you. You may not think this affects you at all, but this can be a problem. All it takes is just one spark from a welding torch. Uh, as we saw earlier, it's a good possibility that the fires around Crittenden County, around I-55, were caused by a tossed-out cigarette butt. Lit cigarette butts in dry conditions like this can start large wildfires, which can be a threat to property and safety. So once again, if you're a smoker, it's very tempting and very easy to just toss that butt out the window. It's not a great idea for pollution. It's also not a good idea now with the threat of wildfire out there. So any burning of, say, construction equipment or anything in the way of burning yard waste, that is forbidden at this point in time in Lee County, Arkansas and Tate County, Mississippi. And so far, that's the only counties in the News Channel 3 viewing area that are under a burn ban so far. Now, thank you to all of you who have sent in information that there are towns and civic areas around the Mid-South that have active burn bans in effect. That's true. We don't have them on the map right now because we're just going on a county-by-county -county basis from the states, the respective states, the Department of Agriculture and Divisions of Forestry to give us this information. But we'll keep you up to date on this as these map numbers and these counties will be changing from time to time. Western Arkansas had a whole bunch of counties in here, but the rain in the, over the last couple of days, the Division of Forestry in Arkansas have removed those counties from the list. So these can change on a day-by-day -day basis. I'm expecting to see some difference in the counties as we go into tomorrow. And if you'd like more information about what all this means, all you have to do is go to our website. Again, head to where you see the forecast down here, wrg.com slash weather. And the links to all of this data is supplied on our website so you can take a look at what's going on out there. It's a good possibility that if we don't get any more rainfall, we'll be seeing a lot more counties uh, go dry and keep, again, the possibility of more uh, fire potential out there going on. So please keep it tuned to News Channel 3. Uh, if anything does get rechanged on this, we'll let you know over the course of the next several days. All right, into the tropics. It was very active a couple of days ago, not quite so much right now. This storm has had an amazing run coming in from off the coast of Africa about a week and a half ago. This morning, just about midnight our time, it went up to a Category 5 hurricane that was winds of 157 miles per hour out in the ocean. And this is the farthest east storm that we've ever had in modern hurricane tracking that has ever been that strong that far to the east. So this is kind of a significant thing to take a look at on here. Now, over the next several days, Lorenzo is going to be passing its way to the northeast might be a threat to the British Isles as a windstorm. Sometimes these storms over the ocean can hit the British Isles with about 50, 60, 70 mile per hour winds. Good news at this time, looks like it's taking more of a curve back toward the north, so it doesn't look like a major threat for right now. And going over those colder waters, it is going to be losing a lot of its power out there, so it doesn't look like it's going to be a hurricane for much longer probably by about Wednesday evening, Thursday morning, it's going to be a subtropical depression, and that'll be about it. Now, taking a look at air pressure, and especially as we take a look at what goes on in the atmosphere, Lorenzo way out here, again, air pressure, where these things are concerned, what you've got is, again, air rushing around that area of low pressure, trying to fill up that gap in the atmosphere and spinning around as it does, trying to get the atmosphere back to that balance. Now, taking away the clouds and just seeing where the air pressure is located in those red colors right there, again, looking at red meaning less pressure and more stormy, 
that again is Lorenzo as it peels off back to the northeast. What we're going to be looking for is back here into and around the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. It doesn't show up too well here for right now, but as we go into later on this week, there is a possibility that we may see something developing south of Cuba and making its way into the Gulf. There are good signs about this, so if you have any plans for travel to the Gulf of Mexico in the next couple of days, this could be our next storm system that could be a problem for the Gulf Coast. So once again, nothing out there right now, but later on, a lot of the computer models are showing something developing right down south of Cuba and heading into the Gulf a little bit later on. Stay tuned. Again, that's something we'll keep you updated on over the next several days. Here's what we got. For storms, again, we are moving into storm season number two. We have the main season between roughly January and about late April. Storm season number two around here is from roughly mid-October through about early December, and we can have some very nasty storms around here. Maybe you just moved to this area of the country and you've never been through a tornado warning before. Uh, it would be a good idea to know what to do before anything like that happens. So, National Weather Service in Memphis offering free Skywarn training, your opportunity to become a volunteer severe weather spotter. Not a chaser, that is something completely different right there. The next four meetings, and again, this will be listed at wreg.com slash weather if you'd like to know more about where and when and how to get more information about the other meetings coming up later on. The next one will be coming up tomorrow 6.30 p.m., Big Sandy, Tennessee, in Benton County, Tennessee. The one right after that in Carroll County in Huntington, Tennessee, at the Emergency Operations Center, 6.30 p.m. for both of those. Thursday, October 3rd, in Madison County in Jackson, Tennessee, at the Emergency Operations Center. Monday, October 7th, that'll be next Monday, McNary County 911 Center in Selmer, Tennessee. And there'll be about another roughly 10 meetings coming up in the course of the next couple of days and weeks through about, say, October. If you'd like to know more about these, you can follow the National Weather Service on Twitter, or, again, you can go to wreg.com slash weather, and we'll have a listing and links to the National Weather Service in Memphis if you'd like to know more. These meetings last about an hour, hour and a half, totally free, paid for by your tax dollars and my tax dollars, and in my not-so-humble opinion, one of the best ways that you can actually spend your tax dollars by getting people ready to go to know what to look for before severe weather moves on through. So again, please consider that, and we'll keep you updated on the changes in the schedule as well. Play underscore Dixie, very nice view from Hernando this morning. Nice little sunrise view there through the trees. Thank you for that one. TN underscore WX, a nice view from southwest Carroll County, Tennessee. Sunset from a couple of days ago. Some pretty nice views up and around that area. Nathan Woodard 9. Thanks for a nice, I believe, sunrise view from around Cullman, Alabama a couple of days ago. Thanks for forwarding that along. And Maria Wyndham, beautiful view from Sunday morning over Sardis Lake. Nice shot there with a few clouds drifting on through and a beautiful view looking off to the east. So gorgeous shot there. Thank you very much on that. Got weather pictures. We'd love to show them. But we can't do so unless you send them in. So, again, you can find me on social media out there. Or, want to do it old-fashioned, send it along to austin.onic at wreg.com. And we'd love to feature them on there to show people what's going on. All right, one more check about what's happening into tomorrow morning. It is not going to be really on the cool side anytime soon. Matter of fact, we're looking again at some pretty warm conditions out there. Chilly numbers, those are on the way eventually, just not anytime soon uh, for the time being at this point. So just pretty much on the quiet side and very much warm and nowhere near cool. Clouds coming and going throughout dawn patrol tomorrow and numbers rising pretty rapidly after the sun is up. So the kids heading to school, a little bit of extra ice water in the thermos may not be a bad idea, especially for that bike or walking home. Uh, just to be on the safe side for that as well. You as well being outside tomorrow, if you have to, please keep that in mind because we're looking at some pretty steamy conditions out there for the next few days, and especially after school, that's going to be something to take a look at for right there. Thanks to the NFL, we're going to be running about 45 minutes behind schedule for tonight, so we will be on in about two hours and roughly 20 minutes. 
starting somewhere about 1045 later on tonight. So join us for the late edition of News Channel 3 at 10. I'll have your complete forecast there. Todd Demers will be on with your daybreak program at 430 in the morning on Monday. Tim Simpson will have a bit of your forecast tomorrow. I'll be working because Jim Jaggers is out with Go Jim Go. Uh, riding around the Mid-South, raising funds for Le Bonheur. If you see him out there on his treks through the Mid-South, stop him and give a donation. We only have, only have a few more days before Go Jim Go wraps up for the course of the next couple of, for the next year or so. So if you can, please donate. We'd love to have you in there. And again, he'll be riding around the Mid-South in the next couple of days. More information at WREG.com. Thanks for joining us tonight, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Lots more coming up tonight on the late edition. And, of course, Todd Demers' forecast tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak that starts at 4.30. Thanks for joining us tonight.